I'm going to go ahead and get started because we have a lot to get through today. Welcome everyone to Peer-to-Peer -peer Fundraising for your Giving Tuesday campaign. I'm so excited to be talking about Peer-to-Peer -peer Fundraising for this year's Giving Tuesday. Just a couple of housekeeping things before we begin. Uh, so this web, if you have any questions throughout the webinar, please feel free to utilize the uh, questions uh, tool uh, within your Zoom panel. Uh, that makes it easier for me to see questions coming in and I don't miss them in the chat. I will be periodically checking within the chat um, and in the Q&A for questions. And we'll also have time at the end for questions. This webinar is being recorded. So we'll send out a copy of this webinar with a copy of the slide deck afterwards in an email. All right, so what will we be covering today? So we're gonna be talking about first, what exactly uh, is peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, um, recruiting participants, building peer-to-peer -peer campaigns, managing peer-to-peer -peer campaigns, peer-to-peer -peer examples, and then a Q&A. Hello, just as an introduction, my name is Lisa Galperin. I'm the Marketing and Communications Manager here at Mighty Cause. Uh, so before we begin, I'm going to say a little bit of spiel about Mighty Cause because we probably have some people here who are not really familiar with Mighty Cause. Some of you might be familiar, you use our platform, but for those of you who aren't familiar, uh, we've been in the nonprofit space since 2006 for a pretty long time. We're one of the biggest giving day technology providers in the country, uh, and we provide a plat fundraising platform for small to medium nonprofits to uh, fundraise efficiently and make the biggest impact that they can make in their communities. So on our platform, we offer a lot of different tools and features to help make that happen, um, such as integrations, uh, reporting and analytics, peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, which we'll be talking about, um, secure and safe donation processing, uh, a lot. So um, talking through a little bit about some of the things that Mighty Cause offers throughout uh, today. All right, just a little bit about Giving Tuesday. Uh, for those of you, again, who have never participated in Giving Tuesday event, um, or you have participated before, and this is just a reminder. Um, so Giving Tuesday is December 3rd, always the Tuesday after Thanksgiving. Uh, we host our own Giving Tuesday event. Um, so you can feel free to register for our Giving Tuesday event. It's open now and you can go to givingtuesday.mightycost.com. Um, early giving. So when we start counting donations towards prizes, uh, starts November 19th. Um, and by registering, you'll have access to our Giving Tuesday toolkit, resources, trainings, um, and uh, as well as templates as well. Uh, a little bit of what I've just covered in terms of what you get by registering for Giving Tuesday. So to register for our event, you can just go to givingtuesday.mightycause.com, click the register now button, and then there's just two steps to our registration process. So you'll fill out the form. It takes two minutes. Um, it's just a simple form. Once you submit it, um, you will then have to just complete a brief to-do list on your organization page. The to-do list is really just adding your logo and a banner image and a description of your nonprofit, really just to get you ready for Giving Tuesday. So also takes about like two to three minutes. Um, and then once you do that, you'll get auto-approved um, for Giving Tuesday on Mighty Cause. Now, uh, I just want to make a note. Um, if you are participating in uh, one of the giving days with one of our um, giving events that we work with, that we provide technology for, such as Colorado Gives or Giving Tuesday, you do not need to register for, or sorry, Georgia Gives for Giving Tuesday. Um, you do not need to uh, register for our event. You can just participate in those. But for those of you who um, that doesn't apply to, uh, you can ignore that and um, feel free to register. All right, um, and as well, just one additional thing before we jump into peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. So something that we do have on the platform is Accelerate. So by registering for Giving Tuesday on Mighty Cause, you'll get access to essentially all of our essential tools um, for the your Giving Tuesday campaign. Um, if you 
want to take your fundraising a step further, if there's tools and features that you think will be really helpful or essential for you, such as, like I said, integrations, and embeddable forms, um, text to give, et cetera, um, that is available on our auxiliary plan. Um, and if you're interested in talking to one of our team members about it, um, you can, uh, I'll share some information at the end about that. All right, so enough about uh, Mighty Cause and our Giving Tuesday event. Let's jump into peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. So what exactly is peer-to-peer -peer fundraising? So I think it's helpful to kind of first talk about what the basics are, because I think that really drives into why is peer-to-peer -peer fundraising so important. So peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is a technique where a nonprofit leverages their existing support network, uh, their supporters, by asking them to bring in new supporters, right? So it is having someone fundraise on behalf of your organization. So here's just an image of kind of describing exactly how it works. You have your participants, they reach out to their your friends, to their friends and family, coworkers, etc. And then they are able to donate and you are receiving new donors that you have not received before. So why would a supporter, why would someone be interested in participating in a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaign? Well, one, it deepens their relationship with your organization. Um, it is a different ask that you are making instead of just donating. Um, you are asking them to share their impact of your organization. Um, you are asking them to share their story or share why it's so important to them and make a big impact for your organization. Um, it's also, and we'll go through some examples, it also can be a really fun activity depending on the type of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaign you choose to do. Um, so it can be a fun contest or competition. Um, and it's a non-monetary ask, as I mentioned. Um, but really why what makes peer-to-peer -peer fundraising so and why it's such a popular or impactful strategy is that, as I mentioned, you are bringing in new donors. If I fundraise for Mighty Cause Foundation, as an example, and I create a fundraising campaign, I'm going to send that to my coworkers. I'm going to send that to my friends and family. And if they make a donation because they want to support me in my campaign, that's a donor you would never have received before or potentially couldn't have received before. So just a couple of different um, peer to peer campaigns, uh, you know, to to get you thinking about what exactly, you know, does peer to peer look like. Um, and we'll go through some examples as well. So there's obviously the popular charity walk and marathon. These are some of the most popular type of peer to peer events, such as like a thon of some type. Um, so where walkers and runners can sign up and then they'll ask their social network to support them. So birthday fundraisers are also a good example of a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaign um, where someone, you know, for my birthday, I want to uh, support Make-A-Wish Foundation and, uh, you know, my friends and family to give me a gift for my birthday, they're going to donate. And that is a peer-to-peer -peer campaign as well. Um, so campaign add-ons, a nonprofit can run their own fundraising campaign and also ask peer-to-peer -to, -peer to help out with fundraising alongside. So this could be a capital campaign that you have and you ask people to fundraise on behalf. Um, giving events and board challenges. So, you know, having your board uh, participate and have a competition or work together to fundraise. And we'll talk about that in a second. So, uh, as we get into kind of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, um, I want to kind of break down just some lingo that we have on the Mighty Cause platform. Because as you'll notice, when we talk about peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, everyone has similar language that they use to describe maybe peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, but it can mean different things depending on what platform you're using or even what event that you're planning. So when we talk about like teams and events, I just want to break down what exactly I'm referring to so we're all on the same page when we talk about when we use those terms. So on our platform, we have two tools called Teams and Events. So Teams refers to a group fundraising page where participants can fundraise individually, but as a collective, as well as a group. 
an event fundraising page combines teams. So having multiple teams and individuals participate. So you can, well, sh I'll show an example in a second, but this would be like a school fundraiser where you have a team such as a class and then within the class, you have all of the students participating. All right, so just a couple of also uh, just language to confirm. So when we talk about campaigns on our platform, so a campaign page can be um, any fundraising page that's on your profile page. So when we say your campaign, this could be a team, an event or fundraiser, could be any type of kind of fundraising activity that you do on the platform. Um, and a fundraiser can refer to the person that's hosting the campaign or the peer-to-peer -peer fundraising page itself. A team member would be someone who has created a fundraising page as part of a team. And the supporter is anyone in your community, your volunteers, fundraisers, donors, et cetera. And I promise this will all make sense as we kind of go through and talk about peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. All right, so let's talk about recruiting participants. So, so before you really reach out to anyone, you want to think about what are your goals for your campaign, because that's where you're going to have to relate to any participant or potential participant that you want to reach out to. So what are your goals for your peer-to-peer -peer campaign? Um, if you've attended one of our previous webinars, you know I love uh, the, an activity where I kind of challenge nonprofits to think about um, you know, in one sentence or two sentences, can you describe what your nonprofit does, what an impact your donation could make to your nonprofit, right? Um, so, and what you want to kind of accomplish with your Giving Tuesday campaign. Um, because once you have really an idea of what you're trying to accomplish, that's going to make your ask so much easier when you are reaching out to people. Um, so you want to get participants engage with what are your goals? Is it, you know, again, reaching a dollar amount, reaching a unique donor? Um, is it, you know, fulfilling a certain impact within your community? Um, so those are some of those high level goals of we are looking to purchase a uh, thousand backpacks for students in need in our community. We want to, you know, feed, provide 10,000 meals within the next year. Um, and you want to also scale your, goal, scale your goal to the size of your social network, right? So everyone here has a different size of so social network. Some, you're brand new nonprofits and, you know, your social network right now may be small. For others, it may be larger. It really depends on um, where your nonprofit is currently at. So you want to think about what is reasonable and possible for your organization at the moment. So who are some potential participants that you could reach out to? So one, board members. That is a really common peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaign, um, a board fundraising competition. So any volunteers that you have um, that, again, these are people that there's a reason why they volunteer for your organization. There's a reason why they want to support your organization. And they're going to have the most, they're, they're going to be the most willing and um, provide the most impact story-wise. Um, any staff or uh, program alumni, if you are a program, family and friends, and also some target groups or target market groups. So what are groups that are interested in your mission or cause or have a connection? So this could be maybe a religious group, a church or synagogue, a walk and running activity club, um, healthcare organizations, women's groups. I mean, so you can think about exactly who is your target audience and if there's any groups that you can reach out to that would be potentially interested. So when it comes to personal recruitment, right? So reaching out personally to people, um, it does require time and effort, but it also will reap the most value when you do personal outreach. So um, it's best to use personal recruitment for participants who are going to bring in significant team members and dollars. So corporate sponsor leaders, again, maybe um, those uh, target groups. 
that are going to provide access to key resources that you need, provide significant dollars and commitment to the mission, and share your impact and story. So just some things to consider and the previous list that we provided really kind of show those are some of those people that will um, uh, help do the following. So when you are making the ask, when you are reaching out to your potential participants, you want to make sure that you are articulating expectations and also um, reinforcing that it is a simple and easy process in terms of setup, right? And we'll talk about how you can make it a simple and easy process. But so you want to clarify what is involved with peer-to-peer -peer fundraising what are they being asked to do and what is the goal? Uh, and you wanna keep it simple, short and easy. So just as a sample message, right? It's easy as one, two, three, visit our organization page, select the fundraise, bu fundraise button and click to get started. So simple and easy of how someone can get started. Um, and you may even wanna consider including screenshots um, or additional information. Um, I, one other thing that's also really helpful that encourages participants is creating a toolkit. Um, so toolkit items can be steps for, again, building a team or fundraising page, email templates or social media posts. So again, kind of providing them all the assets they need to reach out to their coworkers or family and friends, um, share on social media. Um, tips for approaching donors, a suggested timeline for sending emails and posts. Um, so we actually have a participating fundraiser toolkit that you can use that has some of these um, templates that you can utilize for your own toolkit that you want to build. Um, so I provided the link here. Again, I'll provide the slide deck afterwards in an email so you'll have access to it there. Uh, but you can utilize this toolkit to take some of this and kind of create your own toolkit of um, that makes it really simple and easy to for participants to participate. So in terms of, again, making it a simple and easy process. So something that we have on the platform that will be available to you um, on our Giving Tuesday event is fundraiser templates. So this really takes the fear out of fundraising because um, it makes it super easy for your supporters to start fundraising. Um, so in the template, you can um, fill in what the title of their fundraising page will be, the description, images, um, uh, the goal amount, again, kind of filling in the blank for them so that they don't really have to do that work, especially when we're talking about images and descriptions that can be stuff that really tie people down. Um, these pages, um, once they're created, uh, the participants, they can still personalize it if they want. So you can add in, for example, example, a filler image and encourage them to add their own image to the page. But really, again, it's just making it super simple and easy for them to get started. And what's nice about fundraiser templates as well is that you can actually send them a link to the template so that it auto, uh, they don't even have to really click around. All they have to do is click the link and then it prompts them to um, build a fundraising page with your template. So some other ways to recruit participants is really to provide incentives to get them excited and interested. Um, so think about what are some ways, some incentives that you can provide for your event. Um, this can be um, a free t-shirt or merch, a pizza party, um, a gift card, um, and again, this doesn't have to be a monetary gift necessarily. It can be something that's within your means. It could be, um, you know, as I mentioned, gift card. It could be a small gift card to Starbucks. It could be um, you could have a, a potluck, uh, you know, a staff and board member potluck where you invite them to at a public park. Um, there's different ways that you can incentivize participant, uh, per participation for your event. So. So as I mentioned, creating a contest is definitely um, a really popular way of uh, getting people interested or invested. So almost anything that excites your donor base can be turned into a fundraising like extravaganza. Um, so for example, you could set it up where each donation is a vote. Um, so each participant gets their own page and the page with the most votes wins the contest. 
Um, so this creates, you know, friendly competition. It encourages givers to win and encourages participants to share their pages and um, reach out to their community. Um, and I'll show some examples um, at the end, but this also can be a really creative and unique peer-to-peer -peer campaign. And as I mentioned, getting your board involved is also a really popular and common peer-to-peer uh, -peer fundraising technique or, or tool or campaign. Um, so, when you're thinking about your board members, um, review their progress towards any yearly commitments. If there's any yearly commitments, any donations that they have to make or any funding that they have to bring in in the year, this may be the opportunity to get them involved. You can visit a board meeting and talk about your event, discuss how board members could get involved and how they could assist in reaching you know, key community members for team participation or sponsorship. And also share your plans and give them a specific role. Maybe it isn't exactly not everyone is going to be peer to peer fundraising. Maybe some are going to provide a match. Maybe they're going to help reach out to potential peer to peer participants or sponsors, et cetera. And as well, when we're talking about the reaching out, and this also applies to donating as well, you want to make sure that you have a clear call to action in your communication. Like we talked about earlier, you want your message to be super simple. Um, so either well, when it comes to donating, say donate, join us, participate, give again, et cetera. You want to make a clear call to action um, so that people know exactly what you're asking in your communication. And just a couple of CTA examples here. Um, again, some are related to donating, but join us in making a difference, renew your impact. Again, just thinking about what exactly is that CTA that you want to ask. Um, and also this is CTA examples that you can provide to your participants when it comes to donating. All right, so I'm gonna just take a pause and see if there are any questions. So when we register for Giving Tuesday, I just turned the website and it said registration closed. Sorry if I missed this. Um, I would double check at givingtuesday.mightycause.com. Registration should be open if you see that it's closed let me know still but again it should be open um but giving tuesday.mightycause.com um okay uh can you touch on matching funds so for this webinar we're we aren't going to dive into matching funds but the next webinar we have is all about matching grants on giving tuesday so definitely encourage to um register and join us for that one because we'll talk about all about matching grants for that one okay all right so i'm gonna keep going i don't see any other questions at the moment all right so building your peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaign so there are a couple of different ways to build your peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaign, um, but this is a really simple way for people to get started. So um, if you are on Mighty Cause, you'll have your organization page and really all users will have to do is go to your organization page, click fundraise, they'll be prompted to log in or sign up um, for an account um, and uh, they can fundraise. Um, if you wanna create a team or event, which we'll talk about in a second, um, you can click on, again, the fundraise button, click other solutions, and then you'll see all of the options available for the type of pages you wanna create. And let's talk about what are the different pages that you can create. So one type of page that you can create is a, a, a just a fundraiser. Um, so it's a page, as you see, it has a donate button, a, a thermometer, um, it is a, just a standalone page a supporter can create that's connected to your nonprofit and you, they can use it to fundraise for their own fundraising goal. The team page, as we talked about earlier, is a group of supporters who work together to hit a funding goal as a team. So um, the team as a whole has a central page, as you see uh, in the image, and each team member has their own page then. Um, so it's really ideal, again, for group fundraising, individuals that want to participate. It's great for smaller groups who want to fundraise together. Um, and as you see also on this image, there is a leaderboard 
um, that can be ranked by dollars or simply alphabetical order. Um, so it shows how much everyone is raising um, and it can create competition or can simply just, you know, highlight um, all the participants. And then the last type of page is events. And that's where we're combining teams and individual peer-to-peer -peer or individual fundraising pages together and they work collectively towards that goal. Um, so this is an example of one. I kind of used this example prior. But as you see on the left-hand side, we have the event. Within the event, we have the team, which is the kindergarten team. And then within the team, there's the individual student um, that has their own page. So that's how in terms of all of the pages together, how they you can utilize um, to encourage uh, participation or giving. So just um, a reminder in terms of teams and events versus fundraisers. So teams and events, they have fundraiser templates. Um, there's a join button, there's leaderboards, and there's also a specific tool for participant management. Fundraisers also have templates, um, but they're individually customizable. Um, they're standalone. They're perfect for crowdfunding, such as a birthday fundraiser. And really, it's just that individual or uh, has to worry about themselves. They're not part of any collective group. So something as well in terms of when you're building your peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaign, um, you want to think about also incorporating donation tiers um, because you want to be transparent about what you're fundraising and what you're going to be doing with those funds. And that's also going to help your participants when they send to friends or family. Um, it's going to help them tell your story. Um, if you're on my last webinar, I shared the story. Um, but uh, my, again, this is where kind of a bit, you know, peer to peer fundraising and, and reaching out to other networks. But um, my sister had a friend uh, in graduate school who had started a nonprofit of building a school in Kenya. And um, she had received an email about um, her friend had started this nonprofit um, and they were having this campaign to build their first school. And my sister had forwarded me the email and said, hey, my friend is starting this organization. Check it out. Looks really cool. Um, and I went on their page and they had donation tiers and specific um, descriptions about exactly what they were going to do with the funds. Um, and it made me immediately want to donate to their organization. And I did. And afterwards, um, they kept in touch with me. They shared, you know, what exactly they did with the funds, the impact based off, again, the story that they were telling. Um, and now I get, you know, emails now from them that tell me further exactly what they're doing. They built their first school and now they're trying to raise money to sustain that school of um, paying for teacher salaries, et cetera. And they're super explicit again in the impact. Um, and it's maybe one to donate again. So having that specific description and donation tiers help tell that story, help tell that impact and help your participants when sharing that with their friends and family. All right, so I'm going to just pause for a question. All right, do I understand I put the give now on a banner on the Mighty Cause website? So uh, the call to action is really re re regarding any communication that you have or even on your own website. Um, it could be on your Mighty Cause page, but really in terms of the communication that you're sending out. So in your emails, in your social media posts, you want to be super clear about your communication, what you're asking the participant to do. On your Mighty Cause page, there's a clear donate button, and that's kind of the final action, right? They don't, once they go to their page, they should know that by going to your page, they're going to donate. The question is in the communication, what are you asking them to do? To click on the link and donate. Um, all right. Um, how do you do peer-to-peer -peer when you've been asking people to share the email, et cetera, all year? Um, so again, you want to think about what your social network is and also what's possible for your organization. So you want to, based off the list that I shared, um, is it your board members, right? 
maybe it's just three or four people that are going to participate and you do a board fundraising drive. And again, I'll show you some examples of different peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaigns at the end. Um, maybe it is, you know, if there are uh, volunteers that you have or friends or family, right? Um, you want to just think small for right now and really focus on people who are the small group of people. If you're struggling with finding people who are just small group of people who feel passionate about your organization, feel passionate about your mission impact, and who are going to be sharing and raising money. So you want to start small first, um, because not everything has to be a marathon or walkathon that has, you know, 500 participants, you know, that's not going to be everyone, it could be just three to four people, it could be five people. Um, all right, can I include a QR code on my page? Um, yes, you could, you could um, add that as an image. Um, I'm not sure if, if you need to add a QR code, typically QR codes are best for printed materials. Um, so if you're, um, you know, at an event of having a QR code on a printed material that people can scan with their phone, um, it doesn't make as much sense on a website, but you could, if you wanted to, you could add it as an image. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna keep going. So managing your campaign. All right, so on the Mighty Cause platform, um, when you create a team or event, there is going to be a dashboard that you'll have and it'll have everything that you need to manage your campaign. So when you build a team or event, um, there's going to be a join this event button or join this team button on there. Um, so when you are inviting participants to uh, join and fundraise, um, all they have to do is go to your team and event, click join, and it will automatically prompt them to join. And if you add a fundraiser template to your team or event, that template's going to be auto-populated for them. So again, super simple and easy process um, in terms of creating the page. So. Um, if you are making a campaign or making a peer to peer campaign that is, um, you know, exclusive, so you just want it to be your board members, or you just want it to be a certain group of people like program alumni, you can make it invite only on the platform. And so you can turn that on so that um, people can access the page, but they won't be able to automatically join it. And you can also invite people to participate through our participants section on the dashboard where you can just um, click on uh, the invitation tool and add emails that you want to send an invitation tool. So again, making it super easy and simple for you to invite people quickly. And each invite contains that link to your supporters so they can immediately start creating their page. So as I showed also previously, um, teams and events has a leaderboard on those pages. The leaderboards will list all the participants, so all the fundraisers or teams, and they show off the success of your fundraisers. Um, as I mentioned, you can display your leaderboard based off a couple of different filters. So you can do based off dollars raised, number of donors, number of donations, or even in just alphabetical order. Again, if you don't want it to be competitive, competitive, you can just rank it by, by alphabetical order. But this is in general a really useful tool because, again, it encourages that competition and encourages people to see exactly where everyone is at in terms of fundraising, especially if you incorporate a contest or competition of some sort. And as well on um, your dashboard, you'll have two sections called campaigns and participants. So campaigns will list all of the campaigns associated with your team or event. So their creators and how much they raise and participants will just show all of the exact, you know, the individuals who have created um, the page uh, who were exactly participating. And you can download those reports if you want to uh, have more information. So something I also discussed previously is with fundraisers, um, there's a, it's comprised of a, a goal bar, a story section, a donor timeline, social sharing. So whether you're part of a team or event or standalone, 
basically everything is there for your supporters to um, be successful in terms of it. So uh, I talked about this a little bit earlier as well in terms of creating a fundraiser and how simple it is. So it really only takes three clicks. So it could be through your template by sending a link or people can just come to your uh, organization page, click fundraise. Um, if you do have a template and you have labeled it as kind of um, your uh, automatic template, that will be prompted or they can just go ahead and a fundraise, fundraiser page will be prompted that they can fill in. Um, as well on your dashboard, you'll have a donations report. So this donations report will include all donations that are associated to your campaign. Um, so you can download, you can filter, you can search, you can resend receipts to donors, and also you can add offline donations. So if Bob Smith has received a check from a donor and they want to include it on their page, you can do that for them and assign an offline donation to their page. So uh, for some events that you may be planning, um, such as a walkathon or a runathon, there is commonly a kind of ticketing or registration part of it that's outside of just registering to fundraise. Um, so one of the things that we have available on our events tool is an Eventbrite integration. Um, and you can utilize this uh, through the Giving Tuesday campaign. It's not something that is exclusive to Accelerate. Um, so on your event page, you can um, integrate with your event, or I'm sorry, on your camp event page, yeah, you can integrate with your Eventbrite account um, and you can set it up where your page is tied to a, a your Eventbrite page. So what it will first do is, as you see, instead of join this event, it says register. So it's going to direct people. And as again, you see on the bottom left-hand corner or right-hand corner, it will direct them to your Eventbrite page they can purchase their ticket or register, reserve their spot, and then it will redirect them back into Mighty Cause where they can start their fundraising page. So it makes it super simple and easy. You don't have to copy over information from Eventbrite or double your work. Mighty Cause syncs your Eventbrite event. So we pull all of that data over so you can run your event efficiently. Um, we also, um, part of that syncing is we will sync in your attendee management. So if someone signed up, um, you can see that information on your dashboard. Um, if they've signed up through Eventbrite, but they haven't finished you, um, creating their fundraising page, you'll be able to see that. Um, and uh, you will also be able to see, you know, what if you have different ticket levels, what ticket level they purchased, what type of attendee or participant are they? Um, additionally, something that also is available on the platform is text to give. Um, so this is also really helpful, especially for in-person events, but text to give allows you to create a keyword and assign it to a campaign. And so all donors have to do is they would just text um, our text to give phone number with your keyword. So in this example, furry friends 24, um, and then a link will be sent to them via text and they just click on that and that will allow them to donate. Um, so again, really easy process that can be helpful in tandem with your peer-to-peer -peer campaign. All right, so uh, just going over a couple other questions that came in. Should I change the information about the organization that I have on my year-round page during Giving Tuesday? Um, yeah, if you plan on using your organization profile page, I do think it's helpful to um, you can add maybe a section at the top if you have general information about your organization. Um, maybe uh, above it, you add some information about Giving Tuesday. Again, kind of really um, specifying what exactly is the impact you're trying to make. What is your goal for Giving Tuesday campaign so that it's relevant for Giving Tuesday? And then you can have maybe your general nonprofit information below that. Um, 
I had to join late. Will we have access to these slides after? Yes, all of the slides and this webinar will be sent in an email afterwards. Okay. All right. So we're going to go through some peer to peer examples. Um, so again, we can start thinking about what are the different possibilities for peer to peer fundraising? What can we do? Um, so this is one that I love showing um, because I just think this is such a creative and interesting idea. So this is the Toucan Rescue Ranch. This is a contest that they have every year um, and is their call for artists. Um, so as you see, this is something they're using just a fundraising page. They're not using team or events, but it's still peer to peer. And why is that? So um, how they're, uh, campaign is set up is that they invite people to draw artwork or to submit artwork um, and to submit a little inspiration about the artwork. Um, and what they do then is they display all of the images on their fundraising page and they have individual donors donate on their favorite artwork. Um, so as you see, one dollar donated is one vote. So um, if they make a $5 donation, that's five votes to their favorite artwork that they'll designate to. And then the winner um, will have their uh, artwork printed on a t-shirt that the organization then sells. Um, so they, they also have additional prizes um, such as um, a gift card, again, the design, a, a t-shirt of that design, um, a printed artwork, um, a social media post. So like this, I think this is a really great example of, again, this is peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. This is encouraging people to participate, but in a different way, right? People, the artists that submit their work, they're still going to send it to their friends and family. They want, the, their friends and family are going to donate, but this is not necessarily, right, creating their own individual pages and fundraising as you would think um, in a different way. Neither is... Uh, bad or good. It's just a different way to fundraise. Um, but I think this is, again, a really creative and different way to think about what does peer-to-peer -peer fundraising mean and how you can incorporate it. Um, so this is a PTA uh, fundraising campaign. Um, so for them, and um, they didn't utilize teams. They utilize a, an event fundraising page. And then each a teacher um, has their own fundraising page. So students and family and friends could donate to the class essentially, or the teacher that they were looking to support. Um, and then the way that they encouraged people to donate is by having a, a contest and to have um, different um, incentivized giving. So the class in each grade that raised the most um, wins a face painting fast pass for a fun fair. Um, the class in each grade to raise the most money wins popsicles on the playground. Um, the classroom that raised a thousand dollars will receive a sweet treat, right? So these are all the different incentives that they're encouraging, again, students, parents to share their fundraising so that their teacher or that class can receive those incentives. Um, All right, so this is a different type of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaign. This is the more, this is kind of the thon one. This is a paddle -a thon the Ben Carlson Foundation. Um, so the Ben Carlson Foundation um, was started in honor of um, Ben Carlson, who was a lifeguard who selflessly sacrificed his life to rescue a swimmer in um, Newport, California. And this foundation was established in his honor. And every year they um, host a, paddle a called the Ben Did Go event, where they have 110 participants um, endure a 30 mile uh, paddle across the Catalina Channel. Um, and so participant paddles, paddlers are encouraged and, and challenged to raise a minimum of $1,500. Um, so as you see in the example here, this is an example of what a fundraiser looks like. And again, this is also an example of who are people that they've reached out to. They've reached out to people in their community that were, um, were really impacted by this um, event, that are friends and family, 
of them um, who are you know, in that community. And those are the people that are participating. But additionally, this is a paddle-a-thon. So there are also you know, athletes that participate this as well um, in the event. And how, again, they made it a super simple and easy process was they utilized fundraiser templates. So they filled in all of that information for participants. So all they had to do, again, is just click the fundraise button, it's filled out, and then they can just share with friends and family. All right, so this is an example of a board fundraising challenge. Um, I talked about this um, a bit ago of, you know, what does that look like? Um, so this, it was a board fundraising challenge um, where all the board members, as you see, they had their own fundraising page. And then they had a team page where they could send to, again, their friends or family, have kind of, again, be able to keep track of what they're all reaching towards um, so that they can see, you know, who needs to step up, step up or how much they, you know, need more to raise collectively. All right, so this is also just a different creative type of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaign. I love this one because I love seeing just different creative ways of seeing how people incorporate peer-to-peer -peer fundraising related to their organization. So this is the Wild Pants um, by a campaign by the Arc of Palm Beach County. This is a campaign they host every year. Um, so what they do is they have a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaign where individuals create their own page and they share as you see on the right side an image of them in a funky or funny pair of pants um they have friends or family um again donate participate and it all accumulates to a fashion show that they have at the end where people display their wild pants that they have that people have supported so again different type of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaign that you know, is something that, you know, within their community makes the most sense to do this type of event that people are encouraged and willing to participate in. All right, so this is also a different type of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaign, just to, again, kind of show you some different ones. Um, this is a readathon. So they used a team page um, of just uh, having um, the, um, the students have their own pages, but it all within just a team page, um, as you've seen. And then this is the um, 35th annual AIDS Walk Tucson. They use an event fundraising page and they use event right here. So as you see, register, and then it redirects to the registration page where people can register for their event. Okay, so we're at the end of our webinar and I just want to highlight uh, before we get to more questions, um, two webinars that we have coming up. Um, so one um, is winning the donor retention game, best practices for nonprofits. So if you're interested in donor retention, um, wanna know some tips, they'll be um, co-hosted by or hosted by our fundraising specialist, Josh Garcia who's been in the nonprofit space for a while. So they'll be running that webinar if you're interested in learning more about gender retention. And then if you want to learn more about matching grants, we'll be having um, a webinar similar like this, all about matching grants for Giving Tuesday on um, Wednesday, October 9th. All right, so I'm just going to pause and let's see any questions that have come through. So uh, what's the cost for all of this? So um, if you register for our event, it's, there's no cost. Our event is completely free to register. Again, this is related to Giving Tuesday Almighty cause. So this specifically is, you know, how you can incorporate peer-to-peer -peer fundraising for Giving Tuesday. And all of our peer-to-peer -peer fundraising tools for our event are free.
Uh, so yeah, as I mentioned, so registration is um, currently open. So you can go to givingtuesday.mightycause.com and register there. Again, it takes only a short time to register. It's super simple and easy. Um, and you will, will be able to get registered um, pretty quickly. Um, do you find with board give-a-thons that there is an issue with mixed participation? Um, so I think in general, um, or you, I think this kind of can, goes across with any peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaign, right? In terms of mixed partici participation, even if it's just volunteers or friends or family, right? Um, you wanna make sure that you have buy-in from your boards, right? From your board and that they understand what the importance of this event. This is not just doing peer-to-peer -peer for the sake of doing peer-to-peer. -peer. You're not just asking them to fundraise because you just need to raise money and you need to for them to you know pull their weight, et cetera, right? It's that you are, I think this is where it's important to, again, understand that like the idea of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising and why it is so powerful is going back to what is the impact that you're making. So, and, and kind of diving down there, right? So we're looking to raise 10,000 or we're looking to um, purchase 10,000 backpacks for students in need. How do we get there? We need, you know, we need a thousand, I'm, I'm making this up, I'm not doing the math. Um, we need a thousand donors who donate $5, right? Um, so how do we get there? We need, you know, we want to reach this goal. How are we going to do it? Um, we need you guys to reach out to your coworkers, friends, and family, because if you individually raise $500, we can reach this goal. And then we can tell these donors, look what we've done. We've done $10,000 that, or we've purchased 10,000 backpacks for students in need. That's communication you can use next year. That's, you know, further money that you can use next year that your board can talk about what they want to do with. Like, this is a, a circle. And I think the key in is having buy-in with your board and that they're excited about participating. But if we also bring it back to Giving Tuesday, this is the big, biggest giving day of the year. People are expecting to be asked to give. People are expecting to be asked to make an impact and make a difference. So this is the time to really, you know, if it's brand new, test it out. But again, you, if people are not going to be full in, then it's not going to be successful. So uh, I hope that answers your question, but I think just making sure that you have really buy-in in terms of it um, and also have them encourage each other, right? Like if it's kind of lackadaisical, yeah, some people might not be motivated to really do it, but you want to make sure that it is a fun collaborative event. Um, yeah, um, so just a question about international organizations. So yeah, so to participate on Mighty Cause, um, we do, um, all donations on our platform are processed through a donor advised fund. So what that means is that um, we are able to, uh, all donations that are made on our platform are immediately tax deductible for donors in America. And um, we are able to send the tax receipt um, and distribute funds to your organization. Um, since we are a since funds are processed through a donor advice fund, the IRS has um, strict uh, contingencies or uh, rules in terms of who can receive a donation from a DAF. Um, and so you do have to be an IRS registered nonprofit in America in order to receive funds um, on Mighty Cause. So if you're an international organization, um, that you, and you are not registered in America, one potential option that you could do is have a fiscal sponsor. Um, so this is pretty common for, you know, new nonprofits or even international nonprofits. I've worked with international nonprofits who have a fiscal sponsor, but that's essentially um, seeking out a nonprofit in America who will be able to fiscally sponsor you. So meaning they would allow you to use their EIN to fundraise. Typically, there's an agreement that you will have with them 
Um, but that is how international organizations are able to fundraise is by um, working with an American nonprofit that they could use their EIN with to receive donations. Okay, I think that's all the questions for now. Um, again, this webinar will be sent out in a slide deck or in an email with the slide deck and a recording. If you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out and I hope